Hello, Tearnauts, and welcome to this Daily Market Commentary for Wednesday, the 21st of August 2019. Welcome to Wednesday, and another chapter in the recent turn of volatility. Uh, although I was saying that, yesterday was uh, fairly muted on the uh, FX front, uh, although uh, Euro dollar did once again reject and move lower, holding the 110.65 area. Um, Sterling had a, a quick move higher from 120.90 to 121.60, as it appeared uh, that German Chancellor Merkel might be willing to uh, discuss or at least open the door for some discussions um, with uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on the uh, subject of an Irish border backstop, which uh, remains a uh, fairly sensitive subject. When it comes to uh, Brexit negotiations uh, for the crypto world, uh, it was largely a positive day yesterday with uh, Bitcoin running up to uh, a high of 10,800 and uh, Ethereum up to uh, two or 350. There were a reason for the moves, but Bitcoin's continued inability to sustain any move under 10,000 certainly didn't hurt. So what would today bring? Well, uh, sticking with the crypto theme, um, today was actually a complete reversal of what we saw yesterday um, with Bitcoin falling back down to uh, below uh, 9,900 and uh, Ethereum all the way down to uh, 180. A um, couple of potential catalysts, uh, one uh, story of uh, potentially uh, India uh, looking uh, potentially to ban um, all uh, usage of, um, of Bitcoin specifically. Um, there's been a lot of headlines that have been coming out over the past few months about them kind of going backwards and forwards. So I don't know, I might take that one with a grain of salt, but that was one story I saw. And um, another one was a, uh, a comment from the Ethereum founder, Vitaly Buterin, who said uh, Ethereum adoption was limited due to the increased cost of transaction <clears throat> on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. Um, I saw that in a couple of places, and that certainly seems to have uh, probably weighed on Ethereum and then kind of dropped, uh, dragged everything with it. Um, his own comment pretty much made uh, the coin he introduced to the world lose 10% in value uh, in the space of 24 hours. So. Uh, I guess sometimes you've got to be careful what you say. Uh, for FX, uh, it really was a fairly quiet day. Um, Aussie and CAD were both uh, beneficiaries of uh, what would be a pullback in stocks. Uh, Canadian CPI data also came in stronger than expected, which uh, helped to boost the loony. Uh, yesterday's move lower in uh, in equities, particularly in the US, uh, is almost completely reversed as, um, as stocks in the US opened higher. Uh, the Dow Jones... Uh, beginning up more than 250 points on the day. Uh, as the day progressed, it's really quiet. I mean, it's hard to really find anything particularly interesting for uh, probably about two thirds of the US day. Uh, very range bound and, uh, and very uh, very limited movement within those ranges. Uh, no market moving tweets from uh, Mr. Trump for once. So uh, <laughs> that always leads to a quiet today. Uh, finally, we do get a little movement courtesy of uh, a headline from the uh, the Fed minutes, so it's the minutes of their uh, of uh, their most recent meeting, uh, stating that July's rate cut was quote unquote a recalibration, not part of a preset course for more easing. Uh, this saw the dollar gain a little ground, but euro dropped from 111 down to 11080, and sterling against the US from 121.40 down to 121.20. Uh, stocks were all but unmoved, uh, and even the bond market only saw. A minimal reaction. Clearly, the Fed is really just confirming what we probably all know, um, and that was exactly that—that that it was a one and done. So even even those that were uh, really hoping for something a lot more, and you know, we've seen a lot of banks putting out pieces of research saying they've got to cut by 50 uh, points, 75 points more by the end of the year. Uh, I think the Fed is kind of telling us that may not be the case. And as always, they are data dependent. Um, you know, we've seen the inverting of the, real, of the yield curve. Does that mean there's a recession coming along the way? I've never seen so many commentaries um, trying to contradict that. You know, the data just suggests that that's not the case. So, you know, if it's not the case, and we get some other resolution to the uh, the US-China uh, trade impasse, um, then the likelihood of further rate cuts, uh, you know, could be very diminished. So we'll just have to uh, play it by ear, and I think that's what the Fed's telling us, which is probably why... The markets today uh, had a very muted reaction to that comment, but it was enough just to get FX uh, 
a little bit of movement at least. Um, by the end of the day, the Dow Jones closes pretty much where it opened, uh, up around 240 points. The US 10-year yield has uh, crept just marginally higher to 1.59%, and gold is trading around 15.02. Uh, on the crypto front, once again, a Bitcoin dip below 10,000 is short-lived and uh, has rallied back to uh, 10,000. 150 by day's end, although uh, Ethereum is still uh, lagging uh, around the 186 area. So uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Definitely seems to be some buying interest below 10,000 in Bitcoin, but how long it lasts, we will see. Uh, moving on to a technical picture, as you can see here, I have a, a one hour chart for uh, the Australian dollar against the US dollar. Um, given the recent volatility in equity markets, you know, FX, as I've mentioned, has been fairly subdued, and with the exception of uh, the Brexit-driven sterling, <clears throat> the other major currencies have been particularly range-bound, and uh, the Aussie is no exception. And what we see here, going back a couple of weeks now to, uh, you know, the 7th of August, I guess, you know, we see, we see a bit of a, I don't know, something called a flag pennant formation, wedge formation, people call it different things, but... It's essentially the same thing, and what it means basically is that the ranges are getting tighter and tighter, which causes this sort of coming together, uh, if you like, of these two lines, uh, which we haven't quite yet, but at some point they're going to converge. Uh, and often, as is often the case when we see uh, a short-term wedge or flag formation, um, the two lines do converge, and we would normally expect to see an explosive move one way or the other. Um, worth just keeping in mind here that to the top side, we do have what is now a significant level of resistance at uh, 0.6832. Um, so while tight ranges are still sort of persisting, uh, it does feel a little bit like it's a matter of time before we get a move one way or the other. Your guess is as good as mine as which way it is. Uh, it's, it's fairly static at the moment. But um, <clears throat> this, this formation normally suggests that something is on the cards uh, fairly soon. Um, obviously, it's entirely up to you how you play that. And on that, I will uh, leave you to it. I hope you all had a successful day trading. Uh, I hope some of you managed to make the uh, the webinar I did earlier on uh, placing your first trade. Uh, that was more for beginners than anything else. And uh, keep your eyes open for uh, another webinar, uh, a live webinar, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, with that, I shall uh, bid you a good day and look forward to chatting with you tomorrow. Cheers.